Hey everybody, so I'm here in Hong Kong overlooking the beautiful Hong Kong skyline. The reason I'm out here is because I'm gonna do a nighttime camera test of the iPhone 11 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and the Vivo Nix 3 5G. So the reason I chose nighttime is because I wanted to shoot in more challenging conditions. Because in 2019, to be honest, any phone can capture a great photo if it's during the day with good sunlight. So I'm choosing situations that are purposely like a little bit darker, a little bit dimmer, more difficult than usual. Okay, so let's begin our test. So for this first test, I'm just gonna do a standard uh, one times automatic shot and then I'm gonna do a wide angle image so you can see if there are like differences between the wide angle lens and the main camera. And on top of that, throughout this whole test, I'm gonna shoot pictures in complete point and shoot mode. I'm not gonna tap on the viewfinder to adjust exposure because the point is to see how smart the camera is at finding the right balance. So without further ado, let's get started. So you see, one, the thing with the iPhone camera is the night mode turns on automatically when the lighting is dim. But I'm gonna turn off night mode right now because we're doing a night mode, like a separate test just for night mode. So this is gonna be an automatic photo. Normal lens, wide angle lens. Okay, now we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, so we're gonna take an auto shot and then a wide angle shot. Okay, and now we have here the Vivo Nix 3, so we're gonna take an auto shot and then let's take a wide angle shot. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna look at these photos yet. I'm gonna go home, upload all the photos to my large Dell monitor and examine the photos there. And then I would do a voiceover after to tell you the results or at least my opinion and what looks the best. All right guys, so I'm looking at all three of these images side by side. Now we have the iPhone image on the left, Samsung image in the middle, and the Vivo image on the right. I'm gonna keep this exact same order for any time I have three images on the screen. So right off the bat, you see that the iPhone's image on the left, it's probably the most natural and true to life. Samsung's image in the middle, it's a little bit overexposed, particularly the, the area above all the buildings in the middle. You see, it's just taking a little bit too much light, not to mention the shutter speed is a little bit slow as these two ladies, they weren't even walking that fast, but they're a little bit blurry right here. Vivo's image is probably the happy medium because you see the ground is actually pretty well lit, whereas the iPhone's image, the ground, it's a little bit dim, but that is, the iPhone image is closer to real life. So, so the Vivo Nix 3's main sensor is actually a 64 megapixel sensor, but I am shooting 16 megapixel shots here mostly. So these are pixel bin 16 megapixel shots, which explains why the Vivo's image is a little bit brighter than the iPhone's image, even though the iPhone camera and Vivo's camera has the exact same aperture, f1.8. On the Samsung camera, the aperture is probably, it's variable between f1.5 and f2.4. So this is f1.5, hence why everything is just a little bit blown out. Now, I can easily fix Samsung Galaxy's image to make it look a lot better if I tap on the screen and dial down the exposure setting. But like I said, the point of this exercise is to see how each camera produces a photo without any adjusting from the user end. You see how smart these cameras are. I would say overall probably Vivo wins this round in terms of overall uh, color science and dynamic range and all that. Now if we look at Wide angle images right here and all three phones struggled pretty badly. That's because wide angle lens in a smartphone right now, just they cannot excel in low light because the sensor size has to be smaller and the aperture, it's not that wide open. So right here, I would say Samsung's image probably turned out the best. Like you see, look at the building on the right side of the frame. Samsung's uh, building is still pretty well lit, whereas on the iPhone image is on the left is pretty mushy and also very similar on the Vivo Nix 3. Now you go out into the water, all three of these kind of struggle with details and overexposure, but I think Samsung and Vivo's water looks a little bit cleaner and sharper. But like I said, that's because this is a low light image and wide angle cameras from any phones will struggle in low light right now. If you look at wide angle images taken during the day with good sunlight, like right here, then all three of these wide angle cameras are much better, especially the iPhone's wide angle camera. The iPhone's wide angle camera keeps the color science consistent with the standard lens. And I just think overall the iPhone's wide angle camera is excellent during the day, but at night, 
as you can see here, all three of these are below par, but Samsung's image wins by default. Okay, so one of the new features to the iPhone 11 Pro this year, it's a night mode. I know, I know, you're an Android fan, you're rolling your eyes at it because Android phones have had night mode for over a year, but Apple's night mode is really good from what I've seen. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take two night mode shots. One, I'm gonna take it against you know, low light setting, but not too dark, which is basically out here. And two, I'm gonna shoot in this corner. It's gonna be nasty. It's basically a trash can, but at least it's dark enough. Then we'll see, you know, how these cameras perform in pitch black condition. So we'll do the first night mode shot right here against this skyline, the Hong Kong skyline. Okay, so you see the night mode icon automatically turns on when it detects dim light. This is not even really that dim really. So you have to hold still for one second. And then now we're on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. So you just, on this phone, you have to manually turn on night mode yourself, like all other Android phones, really. You also have to hold still. Okay, and then now, okay, and now we have the Vivo Nix 3. So we go to night mode. Okay, so all three of these images look pretty good, but as usual, Samsung Galaxy Note 10's image is a little bit overexposed, a little bit blown out. Look at this uh, boat right here. It looks a little bit better lit and better balanced on the iPhone 11 Pro's image than on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. But then you look at also the grass. Vivo's image is a little bit mushy right here, lack of details, where uh, Samsung has an over sharpening happening right here. So the iPhone, I, to my eyes anyway, the bush, the bushes right here look the most natural. And then now you look at the lights. So all three of these lights are a little bit overexposed. But again, the sky looks the most natural on the iPhone image. And not bad on the Vivo image too. On the Samsung Galaxy's image is just a completely different shade of blue. It's a little bit too bright. And now let's look at the MoMA logo right here so again on the vivo nexus shot you see um there's it's very soft details there's you can't even see the texture of the grass anymore on samsung and apple you can see the texture of the greenery pretty nicely um but again i prefer apple's take right here samsung's processing is a little bit too much is a little bit too over sharp it reminds me of huawei and also look at the building down right here next to the boat right here in the middle on Samsung's image, it's again overexposed. You see the pink lights on the iPhone 11 Pro's image and the Vivo Nix 3's image, they're a little bit more natural than right here on the Galaxy Note 10's image. So overall, I would give the win to Apple just by having a better looking sky. And also the ground too, the ground probably looks the best of the three. Okay, so I found a better spot to test out the night mode in a really dark setting, a lot better than the next to a trash can. So I have here the iPhone 11 Pro Max and you see the night modes are automatically popping up and suggesting three second exposure. So we'll leave it at that. So you see, you see the dial moving and the image is brightening up right before your eyes. That's pretty impressive. Looks pretty nice to my eyes so far on the phone compared to the real life scene, but I'm gonna examine this back home. Okay, and then we have here the Galaxy Note 10 Plus now. So this night mode, you have to manually switch to it and it takes quite a bit of time. It's gonna do like maybe five seconds. See, Samsung's night mode, it's really slow. But okay, damn, this seems to be the bright, uh, more brighter image than the iPhone 11 Pro Max's. Okay, now we have here the Vivo Nix 3. So we'll go to night mode. So it's also a three second shutter. And it uh, looks pretty good. Okay, so all three phones performed excellently right here. Vivo's image is the dimmest of the three. As you can see right here, the sidewalk or the curb is drenched in shadow, whereas the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 in the middle and the iPhone 11 Pro's image did a good job of bringing out some light into the area right below the curb. And also if you look at the tiles on the sidewalk, Vivo's image loses a lot of details right here on the ground. Now you look inside the lights, Apple's image on the left probably looks the best. The words, uh, Mu edi I think Mu edi Music Edition in there actually is properly balanced, whereas on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10's image in the middle, it's overexposed. And on the Vivo Next 3's image is a little bit blurry.
And finally, just looking at the light right here, just in front of the door, above the door, looks a little bit more natural and visually pleasing on the iPhone 11 Pro's photo on the left compared to the Samsung's photo in the middle and Vivo's photo on the right. So overall, it's a close call, but I would say the iPhone takes this round too. Okay, so for the next test, we're gonna test bokeh portrait mode. So this is my girlfriend right here. She's been holding the camera, so she's the camera person today. So first we have here the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So we'll go into portrait mode. And of course you can change different lighting too, but we'll just go with the standard auto one for today. Okay, and then we have here the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So we'll go into, Samsung calls it live focus. So see, Samsung also has different effects you can play with too. And Samsung's uh, bokeh mode seems to get a tighter crop, so I have to back up a little bit just to get the same framing. Okay, and finally, we have here the Vivo Nix 3. So we'll go to po portrait mode to see it zooms in quite a bit. Okay, so I don't know what happened to the Vivo image, but there is no bokeh. There's no depth of field action going on. So this one's just disqualified right off the bat. Let's get it out of the way. Now we're looking at the Apple image on the left and Samsung's image in the middle. I guess it comes down to a matter of preference. Apple's image is again more realistic. The skin tone's closer to my girlfriend's real life skin tone, but I think a lot of Asian people, especially ladies, when they take selfies, they prefer to have the skin appear a little lighter. So if you ask my girlfriend, she might actually prefer Samsung's photo in the middle compared to the iPhone's photo. And I also think the Note 10 did a little better job of edge detection around my girlfriend. Um, the edge around her cheek and her hair. But I forgot to mention, the Note 10 has an extra fourth camera, it has a depth sensor. So that explains why the Note 10 can take better bokeh images than the iPhone or the Vivo. At night anyway, the depth of field looked pretty good on both. So Samsung wins this one. Now let's look at video recording. All three of these are shot at 1080 So you see that the iPhone 11 Pro has the best stabilization and the best balance. The lights are completely blown out on the Galaxy Note 10. And the iPhone 11 Pro's camera can zoom in and out smoothly, whereas the Vivo Nix 3 zooming is a little bit jerky. In terms of audio, the Vivo Nix 3's audio is terrible. The iPhone and Samsung has equally good audio. Now it's the same story here. The Galaxy Note 10 and Vivo Nix 3 completely overexposes all the lights. And now watch when I walk. Stabilization is just much better on the iPhone 11 Pro than on the Note 10 and the Vivo Nix 3. Okay, so for this next test, we're gonna test out what I really don't like to do, which is the selfie camera. So I'm gonna try to take a selfie here with the Hong Kong skyline as my background. Um, in fact, Elizabeth, why don't you join me on this selfie? I don't wanna be in this by myself. Okay, so let's test out the selfie. I'm gonna take a couple just to test. Oh, you, on the iPhone selfie camera um, software, this is new. You can actually get a wider angle field of vision. Okay, now we have here the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, so selfie. The Galaxy Note 10, obviously, you can switch between wider or tighter crop. That's been a feature for a couple of years now. Okay, and we have here the Vivo Nix 3 with that pop-up camera, obviously, that Vivo's been doing. So this one, you don't get to adjust the field of vision. You only get one crop, but the lighting looks really good. Okay, just looking at the selfies right away, I don't like Samsung's version. Um, the skin is just way too white. They're also too aggressive with the skin smoothening. I mean, look at me. I don't even look like a real person. I look white. My eyebrows have disappeared because they've like wiped away so much of my um, skin tones and stuff and texture. Apple is the most realistic portrayal of my face. But I think I like Vivo's the best. There's a little bit of um, beautification and skin smoothing going on, but not as hardcore as Samsung's. And once again, Samsung overexposes the lights in the background. Vivo does a little bit too, while Apple keeps the light at least a little bit more closer to the real life scene. So, matter of preference, you can choose Vivo or Apple's, but Samsung loses this round. Okay, so that's about all the testing I'm gonna do in this um, location, Victoria Dockside. But yesterday and over the last couple of days, I actually have been taking the phones around Hong Kong to do a bunch of different t 
testing. So I'm gonna show you some more photo samples right here, basically comparing photos captured by the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and the Vivo Nix 3. So you can see the different side by side. So in general, I would say the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus produces the, the most Instagram worthy photos. Like they're the most punchy with the highest contrast, but the iPhone 11 Pro Max has the best details. But the Vivo Nix 3 actually has a couple of strengths that the other two phones cannot do. So the first thing is that the Vivo Nix 3 has a 64 megapixel sensor, which you can shoot in full 64 megapixel mode. And when you do that, there's just so many pixels in the picture that you can zoom in closer than you could with an iPhone or Samsung photo. As you can see here, the Vivo photo is just a lot more clear. And on top of that, Vivo's wide-angle lens also doubles as a macro lens that allows you to get up to 1.4 centimeters close to the subject. You cannot do that with the iPhone or the Galaxy Note 10. So you see here, I'm trying to take a macro shots of this Thor Ragnarok coin and the Vivo image can just get a lot closer to the coin without losing focus. Whereas the iPhone and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, that's about as close as I could get before it gets blurry. So ultimately, each phone has its strengths, but just based on the fact that the iPhone 11 Pro Max won the video convincingly and won night mode convincingly, I would say the iPhone 11 Pro Max is the best video camera of the three. It's technically the winner, but the Samsung and Vivo cameras are also very, very capable. So that's about it for now. I still have more videos coming up on the Galaxy Fold, the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, and a review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.